Just another, today, yeah. Another segment with State Representative Alan Seaball. We had Governor John Bell Edwards earlier. I cited this with the governor, and I found it in The Advocate a few days ago. The Tax Foundation, the Tax Foundation ranks Louisiana 44th when it comes to business tax climates. Local governments, and I don't want to skip that. Currently, Louisiana is the third highest such business tax in the nation. That's not exactly the the picture that John Bell was painting about the future of our state uh, of our state economy. Now, and that study is absolutely true. And what the study doesn't say, but I will, is we are that low or in that ranking, or, or our taxes are that high because of John Bell Edwards. He's he's taken uh, the 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 inventory tax exemptions away. He's he's clobbered ITEP. The the industrial tax exemption program you know, is all me, but I, non-existent. We now. were talking about that a little bit last evening, and I had seen and I brought it up with with the governor that that as far as his executive order pertaining to ITEP industrial tax exemption program, and the article out of Baton Rouge the, just a couple of days ago that that Exxon is not going to expand its Baton Rouge plant by over a billion dollars because the school board in Baton Rouge said, no, we're not going to, no, no, we're, we're, we're going to tax you on that. And Georgia Pacific just closed a, a plant in, in the Baton Rouge area, costing about a thousand jobs. Uh, there was another, I think it was a pipe manufacturer, closed up shop for the same reason. And that is 100% because of John Bell's executive order. The ITEP uh, applications are down 72 percent and what he did he's, he made a comment on your show he said that all the ones that have come through have been granted that's true but with his executive order he uh well i don't know that to be true i don't know it to be not true but with his executive order he significantly limited the scope of who can apply well exxon, so the applications me, themselves, exxon decided we, we talked about it exxon said we're just withdrawing the itep application completely right but, but because locals and the itep's been in existence for like 80 years and um um, there was there was a board which would approve or disapprove the applications. And in this particular case, what John Bell did with his executive order was say, we're going to let each taxing authority within an area, the school board, the sheriff, the parish committee, whatever. We're going to let each of them decide on their own whether to exempt the whether to give the exemption or not. And the, the East Baton Rouge School Board said, no, we're not going to give you the exemption. And Exxon said, fine, we're not going to spend a billion dollars in East Baton Rouge Parish. Mm -hmm. And. I mean, that, and that has that has played out. We lost a multi-billion dollar facility that was looking around uh, Lake Charles area. They simply just went right across the state line to Texas. I think it was a thirty five billion dollar investment facility that would have employed thousands of people at, you know, high paying jobs, not people flipping burgers. Um, and it's gone. It, and it, the ITEP board would have approved that. Yes, absolutely. Can I ask you a question and and, uh, and you give me an honest answer? Not, not like you don't. I always give you honest. You answers. always do. But I, I, to your heart, to your core, I hate even asking this, but I'm gonna. <laughs> I hate even asking this. Has John Bell Edwards done anything good? Hmm, that's a tough question. Um, um, I might have to think about it. He's done some things that weren't horrible. <laughs> um, I, I, look, look, I spent five years in the legislature with him. And we very rarely agreed. We, we actually worked together on one bill and we joked about it a lot that, and we passed it with flying colors because he and I, you know, stand in arm in arm and it flew through. And, and I said to him, you know, if, 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 if you and I could agree more often, th there's no limit to what we could do. And he said, you know, um, and his, his, his comment was, you know, I needed to go to his way of thinking. And, and I said, no, no, you need, you need to come to mine. Do y'all ever sit down? I mean, do you ever no. go to his office and sit down and him try to persuade you or vice versa? No, not at all. You don't I, see I've, that happening? I've spoken to him in the hallway a couple of times. Um, and he, he tried to get me to come up to his office during one of the sessions last year, but he was only trying to get me off the floor because I was the only one objecting to his bill. They, he was trying to get me up there while we were in session. And I said, I'll come up afterwards, but I'm not leaving the floor while we're in session. He was trying to get me off the floor so they could pass a bill without my objection. And he didn't want you there after? No, he didn't want to meet with me afterwards. He, he, wanted, to, he wanted to meet with me while they were in session. And, uh, and I said, no, I said, I'll come up when we adjourn. And That's we adjourned at like eight or nine o'clock that night. And I went up there and it was bake. His office kind was kind of stinky politics, Alan. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's exactly, I was the only one in the first special session last year. I was the only one that objected to the income tax increase bill and the sales tax increase bill. And it was the second special that I actually filibustered it. But the first special, I got the votes and we killed it. And I was, I was the only one that went to the floor 
opposing his bills. And it was it was then that I pointed out that he was using the wrong numbers. He was saying we needed nine hundred forty four billion dollars tax increases to, to balance the budget. And that was not true because there was money coming in like the federal tax change resulted in about three hundred fifty million dollars of extra income taxes to Louisiana that he wasn't counting. And so I said, I'm, I might be willing to accept something, but it's not 944. He's using the wrong numbers. And then that's when I said, you know, I said he, when he stood here at the House floor and he said 944, it was a lie when he said it. And it's a lie today. And it was. And the, and and everybody went crazy. They called the governor a liar. Then about two weeks later, they came out and said, oh, yeah, the number actually is closer to 600 because we, we wasn't counting the 350. Nobody ever bothered to say, oh, by the way, Seaball was correct. But I was. And he was using a wrong number, trying to get us to raise taxes way more than was necessary, way more than was necessary. And every time you hear him say that we had a $2 billion deficit, that is fundamentally not true. He came in with the way Louisiana does budget. We go from a July to June fiscal year. So the governor comes in in the middle of that. So it was the budget that he came in was passed while he was in the legislature the previous year. And it was balanced. We had a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. And he came in. The only way we have a balanced budget every year, the only way we can have a deficit is if somebody wants to spend more money than we actually have. So when John Bell came in, he said, oh, we have a deficit. We had the balanced budget. I mean, we balanced the budget. You can go look it up. It was a balanced budget. He came in and said, I want to spend more money in the short term. So therefore, I'm going to need more money. So what he did is they, they came in with the, the penny sales tax. They, 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 uh, I think that was when they did the inventory tax. Mm -hmm. Several tax increases came through. Um, and then they had to go to the Appropriations Committee and do a supplemental budget, respending this money. The previous one was balanced. And, mm -hmm. and so every time you hear him say we had a record deficit, we had a $2 billion deficit, it is simply not true. It is factually incorrect. It's a lie. It's whatever word you want to put on it, but it is not true. Because we've never had a deficit because we have a balanced budget. Alan Seaball, State Representative, thanks for coming in. Thank you.